Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts for prior tutorials. This tutorial is about the instance of operator. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website javacjava.com, select begin, I'm going to scroll all the way down to the uh, instance of operator. Now the first thing that we need to understand is the definition of a supertype. A supertype is a class or interface that is higher up the inner inheritance hierarchy. Now the instance of operator compares an object or an instance to the name of a supertype. Notice I got name bolded here and returns a boolean result. The instance of operator will also return true if the instance is of the same class name. Okay, so basically we have our reference variable right here, right? And then we have the instance of operator, and then we have the name of the supertype. So here, for example, right, string s, here's our reference variable s pointing to, or referring to a new hello world string literal object there. Well, string literal, but basically a new string object in the string pool. But anyway, so we have s, which is our reference variable then the instance of operator, and then notice I've got object in uppercase right here, right? And that'll return back true. So we always compare the name of the interface or the name of the class right there. So I was going to make this tutorial a while back, but I, but I decided not to because I really don't like the instance of operator. Now it serves a useful purpose here and there, but it should only be used as a last resort in most cases. And I can't really easily explain why, but as one becomes more fluent in the language, it will become apparent on why you really shouldn't use this very often. Now I'll give a short example of a bad use of the instance of operator towards the end of the code below. All right, let's go ahead and come down here and highlight the source code. With that being said, I'm not saying you shouldn't know how to use the instance of operator because it is, it is definitely, you definitely want to know what it is, you know, but uh, just keep usage of it to a minimum there. So control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm going to move my browser off screen. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, create, you can create one really fast by right clicking, selecting new shortcut, CMD next and finish. All right, just that easy. If you're new to my tutorials, first thing you want to do is type in uh, Java C, which is a Java compiler command. Press enter. You should see all this stuff scroll by. However, if you receive an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. I want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS, go to the screen, cd space backslash, cd is short for change directory backslash, tells it to go the root. I'm going to make a directory here using the md command called java. And I already have that folder, but if you don't, I'll go ahead and create it for you. I'm going to change directories to the java folder. And now I'm going to make a directory here. And I'm just going to call this uh, instance of operator for the folder name. Let's change directories to that folder. And notepad instance of operator. Java. just got this new keyboard. It's got the clicky. Uh, Cherry MX blue keys on it there. Still getting used to the size of it there, but anyway, I'm really liking these mechanical keyboards over the other ones. Eh, off topic. But anyway, instance of operator.java is the name of the source code file there. It's going to be yes. And control V to paste or right click and select paste. All right. Um, <clears throat> here's what we've got. Um, got this instance of operator class with the main, met main method entry point. And then down here, uh, I've got this class box, right? And box is very simple. It has this one method called display box type, which just simply displays the string literal to the console, just a regular old box. Now I've got gift box and serial box, and both of them extend box, right? So box is the super type of both gift box and serial box. It's a super class. And uh, box is a super class, and serial box is a subclass, as is gift box is a subclass of box, okay? And ignore this this, me this method here, but basically I'm overriding the display type in the gift box class to display out to the console, I'm a gift box, right? And then in the serial box, I'm also overriding the display box type method and then displaying I'm a serial box, okay? Now these other two methods are going to come in here in my bad usage example up here. So fairly simple. So basically we've got gift box, serial box, both extending box, each one of them overrides the display box type with their own message. All right, so let's come up here to the main method entry point. I'm gonna create a gift box 
and a lowercase gif box reference variable, set that equal to a new gif box. Serial box, lowercase serial box reference variable, new serial box. Box, lowercase box, set that equal to a new box. And the first thing I'm gonna do is invoke the display box type there, and then I'm going to display to the console um, the result of several instance of um, comparisons there, okay? So let's go ahead and come up here, save this. Let's clear our screen. Java C to compile this. Java to run it. And so basically in the first ones there, right? Get um, gift box is an instance of the gift box class, right? That's true. Gift box is an instance of the box class. That's true. Cause you know, it's gift box and gift box. That's the same class. So that will return back true. Gift box is an instance of object. That's true as well, because we know by now that object is implicitly extended here basically in box, right? Object is the superclass of box and it's there implicitly. I think I said explicitly, but there we if we explicitly do it like that. But anyway, so basically, yeah, it's an instance of that. Um, serial box. Same thing there, right? Serial box is an instance of serial. Uh, oh, one thing I want to do before we move on there, sorry. Um, can we check and see if gif box is an instance of serial box, right? Because both gif box and serial box um, extend a box. What will happen if I uncomment that line and try to compile this? Let's clear our screen and let's try to compile it, right? The compiler is so smart, it already knows that it cannot be converted to serial box. So it, it already does some checks in the compiler thing. So you can't even make the mistake on checking that. So your code won't even compile, okay? Now let's talk about the next thing here. Let's go and comment this one out, right? Can we just say, is gift box an instance of, for example, the number class? The number class is the, of course, the super class of all of the primitive um, in a primitive type wrapper classes like integer and uh, uppercase integer, by the way, you know, and character and so on and so forth there, right? So can we say is gift box an instance of number? Well, let's see what happens there, right? You have a pretty smart compiler is what you're gonna find out, right? Incompatible types. Gift box cannot be converted to number, <clears throat> okay? Um, and I'll explain why in a little bit here. Um, there's a very good reason for that and the last thing we want to do is we have this box object here, right? Um, this reference variable here. Can we say um, is gif box an instance of box here, right? The object, in other words, compare this object and say is it an instance of this object, right? Let's see, let's clear our screen. Compile, right, error. Cannot find symbol and that's because you have to declare You'll notice that, um, you know, going back to my description up here, I made sure bold was the name of the super type. Only the name of the class or the name of the interface is right there. You can't actually do a super type object and compare an instance of, okay? All right, so with that being said, that's, that's um, three things that I kind of wanted to go over that you can't even get it to compile if you try that sort of silly stuff there. Uh, let's go ahead and save this. Let's clear our screen. And we compile it and let's run it. Okay, so serial box is an instance of serial box. That's true, obviously. Serial box is an instance of box. Serial box is an instance of object. Great. All right. Now the last thing is we're going to be displaying a box, right? Which is our just our regular good old box type. So just a regular old box <clears throat> and an instance of box. That's true. An instance of object. That's true. Now we can actually check to see if it's an instance of its subtypes or subclasses. Is box an instance of serial box? No, that's false. Is box an instance of gift box? No, that is false. You might be going, well, why couldn't the compiler have figured this out right here and told us? Well, I'm gonna show you why here, especially when I demonstrate how to do an improper usage of that. Now we're gonna talk about how to, you can kind of see how that works and you get the idea of how instance of works there. But now let's talk about how to do a, oh, a bad usage. Let's say, for example, over here in the gift box subclass of box, right? I decided to put in this, uh, this method called display sweater, and it'll display the console. I'm hiding an ugly sweater, right? Now, over in serial box, I've got this method called display serial. And then inside of it, it's going to say I'm halfway filled with processed corn 
riboflavin and thiamine hydrochloride. Yummy, yummy, right? Okay, so I've got these two methods here, both unique to each class. Gift box has display sweater, cereal box has display cereal, and box just, of course, has this up here, right? Okay, so I'm creating new box um, reference variable types, birthday, and setting that equal to a new gift box new block box corn explosions and setting that equal to a new cereal box and a box brown box and just setting that equal to a new box. Okay, let's talk about this static uh, method here called box info, right? As it's, um, it's a parameter, it takes a box type, right? And that's why I've done all of these as box types there. Okay, so inside of this box info, the first thing I'm gonna do is display the box type. Now display box type, of course, is the method inside a box and we override that for each one of these. So polymorphism is going to pick the appropriate one and display it there automatically. Okay, now let's talk about the example of the bad usage here. <clears throat> and by the way, this is where we're going with all this here. But anyway, so let's just say, the first thing we do is we compare B, which is our box object coming in there. And we check if it's an instance of gift box. Now, if it is an instance of gift box, we're gonna go ahead and downcast using the downcasting syntax here and invoke the display sweater message, okay? Now, coming back up here real quick there, box is an instance of gif box equals false. You're like, oh, well, if that fails out, then, um, you know, why did, well, if it's gonna be false, why does it fail out? Well, we want it to not fail out. We just want it to return back false so we can do this sort of stuff here, right? I almost said stupid stuff, but we do this sort of stuff here. But, so anyway, um, we know the display sweater, right, is not part of the, is not a method in the box class. So if we tried to go ahead and just invoke that without down, downcasting, it's going to say, you know, unknown method or something similar to that, right? So if it's an instance of gift box, we want to display the sweater message. Um, otherwise, else if, we, if it's B is an instance of cereal box, then we want to display cereal, display the cereal message down here, right? Um, and... Of course, we have to downcast that because there is no display serial method in the box class here. And otherwise, you know, basically we're dealing with a box, so I'm just gonna do, I'm just holding miscellaneous contents, okay? So, all right, let's go ahead and uncomment the lines where we actually run those and pass in birthday, corn explosions, and brown box. All right, let's go ahead and save this, clear our screen, let's recompile. And let's, uh, let's run this here. Okay, so down the bottom here, I'm a gift box. I'm hiding an ugly sweater. I'm a cereal box. I'm halfway filled with processed corn, riboflavin, and thiamine hydrochloride. Yummy, yummy, right? And just a regular box, I'm holding miscellaneous contents. All right, the end result is, hey, it worked right on. You know, we downcasted our stuff there. We invoked the methods we wanted to. Um, otherwise, we just displayed, you know, the default method, which would indicate it's just a generic good old box box. Okay, so this is all wrong. This is all wrong. We don't use polymorphism at all, which is what we should be doing. So how do we fix something like this? Well, it's really, really rather simple. So the first thing we want to do is, is we want to take this case right here, right? And we're just going to uh, come in here and make a void. Um, we'll just call this show contents, right? <clears throat> so by default, any box object um, will default to this method here, right? And we'll do, I am holding miscellaneous contents, okay? All right, so far so good. All right, now, um, let's take this out, right? We kind of fix that show contents there, right? Um, as a matter of fact, what we'll do is we'll come up here, right? And we'll do b.show contents, right? All right, let's, um, Let's multi-comment this out. I'm gonna take this step by step. I was gonna do it kind of all at once, but I'm gonna just take it step by step so you can understand what's going on here. So show contents, right? 
Um, we're gonna, we know that gift box will have a show contents because it's inheriting it because it extends box, right? And same thing with um, cereal box down here as well. It'll have a show contents there, right? So let's go ahead and save this, come up here. Let's clear, uh, let's uh, clear our screen. Let's recompile, rerun, right? Okay, so I'm a gift box. I'm holding miscellaneous contents. I'm holding miscellaneous contents. I'm holding miscellaneous contents on the cereal box and the regular box too. Okay, so we want it to display different messages for the cereal box and the gift box, right? So instead of having two different mess, two different methods here called display sweater and uh, display cereal, right? Um, we just want to override the. Oop, wait, Z. We want to override. display contents, right? <clears throat> okay, now by doing that, polymorphism will take effect and all this bad usage will just be gone. So let's go ahead and come up here and save this. So wait, let's clear our screen. Still getting used to this new keyboard. It's a little smaller in its footprint there, so. Jesus, oh, I'll tell you what. All right, compile. Okay, so I must have typed in something wrong. Oh, it's show contents, not display contents. Ah, there's a perfect example why we use the add override annotation, right? Just caught me up from making a silly thing when it would have looked ridiculous when I compiled there. It's clear screen. I love the an annotations. They are fantastic. Okay, and let's run it there. Okay, so now we're, we've got it good. I'm a gift box, I'm hiding an ugly sweater, I'm a cereal box, blah, 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 blah. I'm a regular box, I'm holding miscellaneous contents, okay? So polymorphism basically, you know, took over the, the bad usage of using the instance operator on that there. So instead we're able to just, you know, invoke the show contents. Polymorphism will pick the appropriate method based on the type of the actual object, right? Not the type of the reference variable, right? Okay, um, let's go ahead and get rid of this, get rid of that. And I don't really have any final thoughts on the instance of operator, you know, I just, just want to reiterate, it's not my favorite operator, I don't particularly care much for it. It does serve some useful purposes here and there, but most of the time, um, especially when you're, when you're learning this new thing, is you might end up slaughtering it and using it in ways that you really shouldn't be where like polymorphism can take over and you know, and stuff, stuff like that, so anyway. Uh, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.